Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now turn unto the altar of God and make a confession of our consciences. Seeking the Lord's forgiveness for our sins, I will now offer the act of confession. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have through my own fault sinned against your holy laws. In my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have done or failed to do, I sincerely regret my sins and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory. To God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, your Son taught us to love you above all, and our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to follow his example, that our love for you may be evident in our caring for our brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 30th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. 
You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extorter toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, Soriel Psalm, is taken from Psalm 18. And the response is, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise to be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, extolled be God my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. Today, the second reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy in the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare among us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. In today's Gospel we read, When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by saying, Teacher, which commandment is in the law is the greatest? In Judaism, the Torah, or the law, believed to be the revelation from God given unto Moses, contains 613 commandments, which was first mentioned in the third century by Rabbi Shammai in a sermon on the Torah. Of these 613 commandments, there are 218 positive commandments, thou shalt, and there are 365 negative commandments, thou shalt not. Furthermore, God sent prophets during the time of the kings of Israel and Judah to reveal and to preach his given word. In the Old Testament, there are 17 prophets, five major and 12 minor. You know, when Jesus, who knew Holy Scripture, was asked what is the greatest commandment of our Lord, he condenses all these writings into two commandments, which we, as Christians, being taught in catechetical instruction, know as the two commandments of love. Jesus declares that upon these two commandments, the entire law and all that the prophet, prophets had said are fulfilled. The first of these two commandments of love is found in the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. The second commandment is found in the Old Testament book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. You shall not take vengeance or hear any grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. I would recommend that you, when given the chance, to read the 19th chapter of the book of Leviticus for parallels to the teachings of Jesus. Did not Jesus declare in Matthew 5.17 that he did not come to abolish the law, but rather to fulfill it? Jesus declares that loving your neighbor as yourself is like the first. How precise. How easy to remember. But yet how difficult to fulfill and live up to these two commandments. This was not the first time that Jesus reminded his followers of these two simple commandments. He uses the parable of the Samaritan as found in the Gospel of Luke. Now we recall this, the Samaritans were a people that were despised by the Orthodox Jews and were considered unclean. Love God and your neighbor as yourself. I think that this is the second most difficult target that Jesus proclaimed besides his words of being perfect 
as his heavenly Father is. Love your neighbor as yourself. Easier said than done. What if your next door neighbor supports a political candidate that you do not? What if you are driving and someone cuts you off purposely? What if a black or brown family moves next door to you and you are white? There are so many examples found in our communities, in our nation, in our world, where ang anger, hatred, resentment, and division are found and promoted instead of seeking the power of love of God and neighbor or seeking mutual respect for one another. In less than two weeks, the people of our great nation will cast ballots for the next president of the United States. I have had the opportunity to watch the two presidential debates and I am truly saddened and discouraged by all the negative rhetoric that has been said. Instead of promoting positive ideas for the good of our nation for the next four years, today's politics have taken on a selfish and an immature childlike atmosphere where personal attacks, finger pointing, accusations, and misinformation seem to be more important than finding united solutions to the problems we are facing today. The coronavirus, the economy, social injustice, global warming, the opioid ep epidemic, immigration, and others. President Woodrow Wilson wrote these words, you are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world. Loving one's neighbor as ourselves, easier said than done. There are family members who have carried hatred and anger and grudges for years. Families who have not talked with other family members for years and who would rather die with a hardness of heart instead of seeking resolution. In our catechism, we are taught that the two commandments of love are divine commandments, which in our faith we believe is the will of God and serves as guidelines on how to conduct ourselves to achieve the goals of life, to live in harmony with the precepts of God and the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are also taught in our catechism that in loving our neighbors, we must care for the spiritual and the bodily welfare of others as we care for ourselves. We may never achieve the perfect harmony of loving God and our neighbors as taught by our blessed Lord, but that does not mean we must stop trying. I believe that living these two commandments of love is found only in searching oneself honestly and seeking to hear and be guided by that inner voice of one's own conscience which teaches us what is right and what is wrong. The American author and speaker John C. Maxwell wrote, most people want to change the world to improve their lives, but the world they need to change first is the one inside themselves. How sad that there are so many who have ignored these two simple commandments and directives. I truly believe that without striving to live by these two commandments of love, our world, our nation, and the peoples 
of our world and our nation will destroy themselves through their own selfishness, bitterness, and unwillingness to love their neighbor as themselves. And so, my brothers and sisters, may the words that we find in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians be admonition and instruction to us all. Paul writes, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgives you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. On this day, we remember those for whom we offer prayer. And the response is, hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. We pray today for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the homeless and the hungry, the unemployed, that God would send his blessings upon them, that they might know that he is ever near. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all victims of the COVID-19 pandemic, those who are suffering, those who are dying, as well as for their families, that the good Lord, might bless them with the touch of the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all neglected and abused children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. We pray unto the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for our church and for holy name of Jesus, that God's blessings might rest upon the members of our congregation and that God would bless them with peace and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would send forth his holy angels to protect and to watch over them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, if anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot 
love God whom he has not seen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, we place our gifts before you in sacrifice. Teach us to love as you love, and to forgive others as you forgive us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zanana in the highest. Today, during Holy Mass, we offer up the canon of St. Basil the Great, one of the early church fathers. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. 
you have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us the hope for salvation. Gracious God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us. This bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who minister in your holy church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone.
Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we might find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all your saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as the Lord has given us his teachings. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, also with you. and now my brothers and sisters, may you all receive the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And now, I will offer the communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since we will not be able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally, may I offer this prayer of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. 
I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and my Savior. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food, and may the gifts I have received this day bring me healing and strength now and forever. and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you join us to the company of the chosen and have fed us with the bread of life. May we who have shared at this altar share our love with each other. In the name of Christ our Savior, we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and your loved ones, and the, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be ever within your hearts. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth and love God and our neighbor as ourselves. Thanks be to God. and sisters, I welcome you to Holy Name of Jesus Parish, in which we have offered the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It is my prayer that the good Lord might be with you today with your loved ones and bless you with blessings of health, healing, and prosperity. We will conclude this morning's service with praying for one another, praying for our neighbors, that God might be grace, graceful unto all of us. We will also offer a prayer for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed brothers and sisters. May God be with you until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, Brethren, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.